This week, a new theory on the location of the vanished flight of Malaysian 370 made headlines around the globe. An aerospace engineer named Richard Godfrey claims to have accurately pinpointed the location of the crashed Boeing 777. So, where is MH370? Is this theory anything to go by, and what does it even describe? Find out with me today as we take another deep dive into the topic. Welcome to Airspace. First, let's briefly recap what we know so far. If you want to watch a detailed account of the events, check out my other video on Malaysian 370, popping up in the top right corner right now. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 took off from Kuala Lumpur after midnight on March 8, 2014. It was bound for Beijing. Roughly an hour after takeoff, Malaysian air traffic controllers instructed MH370 to contact the Vietnamese air traffic controllers. The captain of the aircraft just acknowledged his transmission with the infamous last words of the flight, Good night, Malaysian 370. Shortly thereafter, the plane made a 180 degree turn, flew back over the Malay Peninsula, turned northwest over the Strait of Malacca and then disappeared from all radar screens. After that, the aircraft was unreachable by radio or satellite communications. However, it continued to send automatic diagnostic data of its satellite communication system. From the travel time of these signals, scientists were able to reconstruct a rough but possible flight path of the lost airliner. When they combined this information with the Boeing 777's performance data, such as speed, fuel burn and endurance, the committee was able to determine a search area. They named this search area the 7th Arc. As I said, it's somewhat complicated. If you'd like to have a more detailed explanation, check out my other video. For now, it suffices to know that this area is located here, about 2000 kilometers off the west coast of Australia. The investigators also found out that the captain of the flight had a rather sophisticated flight simulator in his home. Upon closer inspection, analysts discovered that the captain had programmed some waypoints in it. When connected, these unrelated waypoints somewhat matched the flight path of MH370. The evidence was however deemed inconclusive by the investigators. Okay, now you're up to speed. Let's now have a look at this new theory presented by Richard Godfrey. He claims to have accurately pinpointed the location of MH370. How did he do this? According to him, it's possible to track an aircraft using radio waves. Let's see how that works, although I apologize to the amateur radio community out there, I'm probably going to oversimplify a few things. But here it goes. Most amateur radio operators use HF, that is the high frequency band for their transmissions. These radio waves have an interesting property. They bounce around the globe between the ground and the ionosphere, which is a layer of the atmosphere. That way, radio signals can travel around the world without being restricted to line of sight. This enables radio operators to talk to people on the other side of the earth anytime. Today, this technology seems somewhat redundant with the internet around, but still, it is used not only by hobbyists, but also by aircraft flying over the North Atlantic, for example. In 2008, physics Nobel Prize winner and amateur radio operator Joseph Taylor created a new protocol called Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, or in short, WHISPER. It's designed to test propagation paths of signals, in other words, to see where a signal traveled to. Whisper signals are sent automatically every few seconds by the stations of amateur radio operators and results are saved in a large database. Richard Godfrey claims to have figured out that one can look for anomalies in these whisper links to see if an aircraft has crossed the path of a specific transmission. I have a short video to illustrate what happens as an aircraft crosses a transmission path here for you. In his paper that the scientists published recently, he described the many whisper links around the world as tripwires an object can cross. If it does so, it leaves behind a very telling signature from which a position can be calculated. For example, one whisper signal was transmitted in Switzerland just after Malaysian 370 had taken off, many thousand miles away. The signal was picked up by a station near Canberra, Australia. On its way around the globe, it crossed the path of MH370 just after takeoff and the anomaly in the signal apparently enabled Richard Godfrey to determine the position of the aircraft at the time. In a crowded airspace, information like this would not be worth much, 
but over the southern Indian Ocean, there were almost no other aircraft on the night of the disappearance of MH370. This would increase the likelihood that any target detected in the area would likely be the vanished airliner. Richard Godfrey developed a software he calls Global Detection and Tracking Any Aircraft Anywhere Anytime, or in short, GDT AAA. It searches through the Whisper database, looks for anomalies and plots possible locations of an aircraft over time, which then results in a possible track. With it, he found what is, according to him, the most plausible track of Malaysian 370. The first part of the flight is easily verifiable by radar data. After the aircraft disappeared from radar screens at the Strait of Malacca, it took several turns, bringing it off the west coast of Sumatra, where it performed something that resembles a holding pattern, but much larger. The aircraft then turned southwest and headed for the point where the airspaces of Indonesia, Sri Lanka and Australia meet. It then turned southeast. On this track, the plane would have reached the airport of Geraldton on the west coast of Australia a few hours later. Why Geraldton, a small town with only 37,000 inhabitants? I have no idea. The runway there would have been large enough to accommodate a Boeing 777, however. The plane, of course, never reached the small airport. It turned south about 20 minutes after it had started to head towards Geraldton. Suspiciously, it then started to fly exactly toward the endpoint found in the captain's home computer. But only a short while later, the track becomes more erratic. It heads southwest, then south, and ends in a series of turns. The flight then, according to Godfrey, crashed around 6 nautical miles southeast of the 7th arc. There are two more detections after the crash, which would extend the flight duration of the aircraft by a maximum of 4 minutes, but these seem more unlikely to the scientist. The new final proposed location therefore lies here, in an area called the Broken Ridge. It is located 2000 km west of Perth, at an oceanic depth of about 4000 meters, and features difficult underwater terrain with mountainous outcrops, cliffs and an underwater volcano. This area has already been covered in the initial 120,000 square kilometer search performed by the company Fugro. A Chinese vessel also searched the area, but not the exact location defined by the new theory. In 2018, a sonar search with a higher accuracy was performed by the company Ocean Infinity. It, however, excluded the area around the proposed crash site. Richard Godfrey goes so far as that he pinpoints the exact location on the seabed where he suspects the aircraft came to rest. To account for inaccuracies, he however proposes a search radius of 40 nautical miles around the assumed crash site. So what do we make of all this? Is his theory plausible? If one looks at the track generated, it certainly looks possible. It also matches the previously calculated track derived from the Inmarsat logons pretty closely. The final proposed crash site also matches a drift analysis of the parts that have been recovered from the accident aircraft, and Mr. Godfrey claims to have tracked other aircraft accurately using his method. Several critics have however raised valid concerns about the theory. Many say that the reflected signal energy from aircraft at such distances is incredibly small, much smaller than the normal signal strength variance that occurs during transmission. In other words, they say that an aircraft cannot be detected by whisper anomalies at that range. Also, Richard Godfrey decided to publish his first paper without specifying his exact methodology, which has currently not enabled other scientists to peer review his work. He however promised to share this information in due time. Why he chose to publish his work somewhat prematurely in that way is beyond me, and it is certainly not the preferred scientific method. But history is full of technology of which people said that it couldn't be done. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Do let me know what you think about the theory in the comments down below, I'd love to discuss the topic. In the meantime, no new search has been launched, but Richard Godfrey claims to be in contact with the previously mentioned search companies, who will be very eager to restart the search. After the last search effort was terminated, the governments involved promised to reinitiate the search should new compelling evidence arise. I'm excited to see whether this theory will qualify as new compelling evidence. If it does, MH370 could be found as early as late 2022, Richard Godfrey claims. Let's see if his theory will prove correct. If you liked the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. A special thanks also to my patrons on Patreon. If you too would like to sponsor this channel and benefit from many cool perks, check out the link in the description. That said, thank you for watching and see you all in the next one.